All right, y'all. Well, here you go. That's right. Four trees just in this little uh, general vicinity. Now, what I do is kind of uh, what they call dense planting. This is a pickering right here. This one I actually just added not too long ago. This is a CC Love. Um, I might pull it out just a little bit more or not. I might leave it. I don't know. This one is an unknown variety. It is a grafted variety. I just uh, don't have the tag for it. So we're going to have to wait for the fruit and figure it out. This one is a graft honey kiss, which is pushing. So I know that's a honey kiss graft. And uh, it's actually going to push buds soon. And then right over here, this is my fair child, which is pushing right now. Fair child. And there's a coconut cream. Super Judy. So that actually makes what? Six trees, seven trees. <laughs> My sweetheart over there, Valencia Pride. All right, so now we got, in, number has just popped up to eight trees in pretty much uh, 15 foot area, 20 foot area. So that, my friends, is what we called dense planting. And it's gonna require a lot of pruning. Maybe right now it doesn't require pruning because there's more trees, but as they start getting that size, yeah, you're gonna need pruning. And if they're really close, they won't even actually get to that size. You might wanna keep them like this if you can, uh, a little bit smaller than this, because imagine one, two, and then you have the third one here. This is pretty much what I call a mango hedge. And I have a few of those little setups like that. Those are what I refer to as mango hedge, hedges. And those will need aggressive pruning once they do fill out that space. You know, you have to prune the sides. You wanna make sure that they're not all growing into each other. But here I get sun from the east, which is right behind me. And it crosses over to the west. So they'll have all the morning sun, they will have midday sun, and then they will have the sun on the west on their backside. So they'll be fine in terms of sun, they'll be fine. They won't really be shading each other out too much. But this here little section, this is going to be a hedge and it will require, you know, aggressive pruning. And this tree right here. I might let it grow to maybe three quarters of the height of this tree over here since it does have some room to go up but actually behind it there there is a uh, some pruots and um, aprium trees so that has to be kept in mind as well I have a valkyrie which is small right now it will grow up into the canopy of this tree this bottom stuff will be tripped trimmed off and it'll grow up into this little area it'll be underneath this tree and it'll be sheltered by this tree so you know you have to um think things out when you're gonna plant now you have loads of space you know acres yeah you can let your tree grow and do its thing and grow to 20 30 feet tall if that's what you want but now picking those fruit is gonna be a pain in the butt Half your fruit is going to get lost to squirrels and birds. And Does it make sense? I don't think so. If I was to have a you know, big space like that, I wouldn't let my trees go any taller than 15 feet. At least that's just my, that's just the way I'm thinking. But, you know, it's all going to be up to you when it comes, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be your decision. And it's going to be based on how much work you want to put into it how much pruning are you going to do or want to do you know at the end of the day if you want to have less interaction then you're going to just put your trees maybe 15 20 feet apart 
and just let them do their thing. If you want to have a little bit of participation and do a little bit of uh, trimming, you want to keep them around 15 feet, maybe 12 feet, then you can keep them about 12 to 15 feet uh, apart. All right, so there's different types of growing. This, what I'm doing right here, is a multi, uh, or what they call dense planting. And it's going to require a lot of trimming at the end of the day. So it's all going to be up to you when it comes to spacing. You know, nowadays, you know, nobody's going by those set standards that they had back in the day. You know, that's more for or orchards, people that are doing this as a business. But backyard gardening, it's a different thing. Here I have a fruit punch. And there's my guayaba. And here in the center, right now, I have an avocado, which I have uh, some grafts on. If that graft takes, then probably this breadfruit, uh, not breadfruit, this jackfruit, is going to get pulled out. So those two, I don't know yet what I'm going to do with those. But I'm going to have something here in the middle. So there you go. Three more trees that are, what, five feet apart? And that's going to be another hedge. It's going to be another fruit hedge. And let me show you another hedge that I have here up against the side of the house. This here is a creme brulee. That right there is a lemon meringue. And then this here is a Venus. And then coming down, I have a honey kiss. It's a little bigger. It's active. Actually pushing blooms right now. There you go. These three smaller trees, I did not apply any additional additives to get them to push because I want growth this season. I don't want them to bloom. I want them to concentrate more on growing. So this right here, these are what, about six feet apart. And once again, they will grow up. There will be a hedge in the form of a hedge. They will be trimmed to the roof line they might go a little bit above the roof line, but they will be contained in this little area. Sort of like a hedge. Once again, let me show you one of my other hedges. And this is just to give you guys an idea. Like I said, I do dense planting of my trees because I know, you know, that I'm going to be trimming them. And that's one thing you want to consider. Um, you're going to have to buy all those tools. You gotta make sure that you have long pole saws, long trimmers with extensions so that you can do this uh, job more easily. So that's one thing you wanna make sure that you get. This here is my Phoenix, so some bloom coming down the line. I have an Edward. And as you can see, the spacing is maybe six feet apart. Sugarloaf. So right there, again, I have another mango hedge for them. They're gonna be trimmed, and they're gonna be kept in this little area right down here, okay? They're not 20 feet apart. You know, in a regular uh, situation, you will have one here and one there, and let them do that thing. But like I said, you know, that's for people that have a lot of acreage, and they can do that, you know? I don't, and I wanna have varieties, so. That's how I do it. Now, the other thing that you can do, you know, if your space is limited, you can do grafting. And grafting will allow you to add different varieties on a tree. This one here is a pineapple pleasure. This is the Phoenix tree. That was a pineapple pleasure. Let me swing around, I'll show you another graph. This one here is an Edward graph. So I have Edward pineapple pleasure on this here Phoenix. And eventually I'll add a couple more graphs onto that one. And it was the same thing with my cotton candy that you saw that I had different graphs on that. So that's another option. If you don't have a lot of space, grafting. Grafting is gonna be a good tool, something you should learn. And uh, it's gonna be very helpful when you wanna have different varieties in your yard and you just don't have the space. 
And I'm at that point right now where I can't add more trees. So, uh, scions is, is my uh, solution. Grafting and, and getting scions. Here's another little close connection, combo, whatever you want to call it. K-saw tree. And then I have here Dupois Saigon. Okay. So it has space to go up. But we do have a tangerine tree here. So you do want to make sure that they are trimmed. Or at least this one is trimmed eventually as it grows. So that it doesn't clash with the tangerine tree. And the Kesar, she's got room. That banana is temporary. It's temporary there. Um, she has room, room to go up to as well. But you have to keep in mind that we have these trees here. So you don't want to block all the sun. You want to make sure that the growth is regulated. Like on this one, I will have to regulate the growth till my Edward gets a little bigger. So these are all considerations that you want to keep in mind when you're worrying about spacing. All right, so what can I say? Bottom line is that it's all up to you on what kind of spacing you're gonna do. If you are willing to do the work and wanna go with the aggressive pruning, then hey, plant your stuff, uh, you know, close together. Um, there's no reason why you can't. It does take years for a tree to get big and a tree is only going to get big if you let it, you know? So at the end of the day, you know, the spacing is really going to be based on how much you input you want to put in, okay? You can have a big yard and then spacing is not really an issue, but then whether or not you're going to prune hard or not, is going to determine how many varieties you can squeeze into that area. There's a lot of things to consider. But anyway, I just was showing you guys what I got going on and kind of giving you an idea of, you know, uh, the aspects of spacing your mangoes. And I hope this was helpful. You know, if you, you found it helpful, please click on like and subscribe. And I'll try to keep bringing you content about mango trees and some of my other fruit trees that I got going on. All right, guys, you take it easy. Lando Backyard Gardener. Shining off, y'all.